everyone welcome back to crafting at whimsy wonderland my name is stacy i showed this uh dollar tree welcome mat in my last haul and i've had several people ask me and i also did the fall truck one and i've had also lots of people asking me what are you going to do with those please do something with those next so i'm going to do this hey there pumpkin one um it's a tiny bit bigger than i was hoping because i found the pumpkin at one dollar tree and the frames i'm going to use at another dollar tree and so i couldn't compare them i just kind of had to guess so i'm going to have to trim off the edges of the pumpkin but i think it'll be okay so what i'm starting with is two of these eight by ten frames this one's kind of scrunched scratched up but it's going to get painted so it doesn't really matter what you want is one that has the photo frame with the mat in it because the frame is actually a bit bigger than eight by ten and what I'm going to be doing is kind of building a terrarium type thing. And these two frames are the same height. Okay, so look for this 8x10 frame with a mat inside. And it's going to be just like a quarter of an inch short of this 11 by 14 frame. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to put these aside for a minute. I'm going to take one of my... 11 by 14 frames and I'm going to center it as best I can on my pumpkin and I'm going to take a I'm leaving it in the plastic while I do this so that I don't get the sharpie marker on my frame because that might bleed into the paint so I'm just going ahead and tracing this because I will be cutting this down and this is where I'm going to need to cut it Well, my marker is really dry. Let me try a different one. My Sharpies are getting rather old. I need to replace them. All right, let's try this again. There we go. That one I can see. Okay, so I've got my cutting mark traced out. And I'm going to put this aside for right now. So that I can focus on the frames. So I'm going to take and unwrap all four frames. I have my glue gun heating up um, so I can use a little bit of hot glue with my E6000 as I tape these things to or glue these things together. And I have some blue painters tape up here uh, to help hold it together. I'm going to glue this together, let it dry overnight, and then in the morning, ooh, okay, that's okay. In the morning, I can spray paint it. And then once I spray paint it, then I'll probably distress it with some chalk paint. These frames here look like they've been through the war, but it was the only two frames I could find that were the right size. All right, so I'm going to take my needle nose pliers maybe there they are. and I'm going to go ahead and just pull these little points out because I just want the frame piece I don't care about the rest of it right now I don't even know for sure if I'm going to put the glass back in it I'm trying to decide that so I'm going to go ahead and just get the Maybe I should put the glass in it. If I put the glass in it, then I have to mask the glass before I paint it. So it's just one of those things. I just don't know what I want to do with that just yet. Pull all of this out. Ooh, that's hot glue in there. Okay. Do left from where they attached the um, the mat with it's keeping the glass from coming out there we go put your glass in a safe spot okay so now I just have the frame it weighs absolutely nothing <laughs> 
also do this with thrift store frames if you wanted heavier duty frames at an economical price. The hardest part would be finding uh, frames that were alike. Like I've got two of each kind. So if you can find that at your thrift store in a sturdier frame than what the Dollar Tree sells, then by all means try that. When you pull these points out, just try to pull them straight out. Try not to pull up. If you pull up too much, um, it tends to break the plastic of the frame. So just be careful about that. Now, let the fun begin. Trying to decide what would be most stable. I think it's going to be more stable to glue the gold frame to the outside of the, the 8x10 frame to the outside of the 11x14. So that's what I'm going to work on. I've got a brand new tube of E6000 because I wanted it to be nice and fresh. And I'm going to run a bead of it down the edge here. I'm going to leave a little opening in the middle and a little opening on each corner. I'm going to stick that back in there so hopefully it won't come out. And then I'm going to put a dot of hot glue. You don't want these two glues to mix. That's the thing. If they mix, they tend to cancel each other out. All right, so now that's there, and it's the back side of the frame up and the back side of the frame in. And I want to make sure that it's level on the table. Because this gold frame is just a hair taller. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a hair taller right there than the other frame. Now I'm going to take some of my blue painter's tape. And I'm going to tape it together to hold it in place. While the E6000 cures. The hot glue will also help to hold it in place. And I'm going to scrape off what's squished out. And do the other side. I'm taking it and pulling it tightly. And I'm kind of using these lines that I have on my cutting mat that's on my work surface to make sure that it's straight. If you don't have one of those on your work surface, then maybe you could use like a the square ruler thing from the Dollar Tree. Okay, I'm going to turn this around so that I can do this other side. I'm just going to have to squeeze in. Hey, if you have an old fish tank laying around, this could you could use the fish tank in the place of this. All right, so now that needs to dry. And I need to go grab one more thing. Okay, one other thing I forgot to show that we needed was two of these square signs. Um, I bought these just for the art and let's see these ones measure about nine and three quarters by nine and three quarters on the outside edge okay and they're just in the kitchen art or the art stuff they're just square okay so we're going to use two of those These 
are going to make the top of our terrarium. Now to get them to mount correctly, I'm going to use this little uneven edge to my advantage, but I can't have this piece of tape up here. And it's going to be a little tricky to do. It's a tiny bit smaller, but that's okay. And so I'm going to need to lift this up a little so you can see it. I'm going to put those on both edges and then I'm going to let them fall into the middle. And one's going to mount under so that they're like that. Okay. And I'm thinking, hoping that it's going to work. I'm thinking the best thing to do will be to put my glue on here. Sorry. So I've turned it up and this is the 8 by 10 frame. And I'm going to probably rely heavily on hot glue on this one. So that's a top piece. I'm going to go ahead and get the glue, the E6000 on both. Okay. <clears throat> and then I'm going to set this up. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue, hot glue here in the middle. It's going to get a little messy and I think I'm just going to have to be okay with that. And then while I'm holding this one on, I'm going to get a little hot glue over here. It's going to get drippy and messy and I'm going to clean it up in a little bit and be okay with it. Because I only have two hands. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to take my tape and wrap it around. Hoping and praying I'm not gluing the tape permanently to this frame. And okay, sorry I was off camera. I didn't have a hand to move it. So I've taped this up. And now I have to do the glue on the top. Okay? And if you look, one piece is under the other. And I'm going to go ahead and E6000. I'm going to leave a few spots for hot glue to happen. Because if I want to put the glass back in here, hot glue is not by itself, is not going to be strong enough to hold this together. The weight of it will be too much. Okay, now I'm going to push these together. Okay, it's going to make my point slightly off center. I'm going to embrace that and be okay with it. I kind of wish these uh, 11 by 14 frames were gold because I'm kind of liking the way this gold is looking. All right, and now I'm going to tape up this top piece. And get it stuck on there really, really good. Okay, and I'm going to, I think what I want to do is, so it has time to dry and be ready for paint. Um, get another glue stick here in my gun. I'm going to actually... No, I'm not. Be right back. I have this Alex Fast Dry caulking that I got at, I believe, Walmart. And it's paintable. Make sure you get one that's paintable if you're going to do this step. And I'm just going to squeeze it in here. It's going to help give me a nice edge. And. It's going to also be uh, another adhesive that's going to hold that on. 
So I'm going to cut this tape off for just a moment and I will put it back on at the end. I just want to be able to pump this in there. This is kind of getting dried out because I used it for another project a while back. So if you had a fresh one, it would be easier to pump in. I just didn't have this idea until just now. Just spread that nice and smooth with my finger. And I'm going to wipe as much of this extra off as I can. kind of clean up my edge. Now I have heard if you're caulking, uh, get your fingertip wet will help to smooth it out if you're having a hard time. Okay, now that I've got that piped in there, I'm going to go ahead and replace this tape just to hold it steady. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. You can also do it down the front, but I honestly don't think we need it there. I just really wanted it here because it's just not super solid. Um, got a mess of glue under here. All right. In the morning when I can take it apart, I will reassess and see if I want to... Um, See if I want to put caulking on the other seams. I want to be able to take the tape off first and see how steady it is. So right now, there's my structure. I've got a nice little house going on. Okay, I just wanted to show you something. This is not a Dollar Tree cookie sheet, but it's about the same size as a Dollar Tree cookie sheet. And I was trying to figure out what I was going to use as a base. And this sits right on top. And then you can pick it up and if I put the glass back in I can still pick it up and put things onto the tray and slide that back on could also fit this way not as sturdy on there but anyway that gives you an idea of what you can do for a base or you can leave the back open and put a solid board down in here or you could use um, paint stir sticks from Walmart. So six, six paint sticks, so that would be two packages, would cover the bottom of this nicely if you wanted to build a solid base in. We'll address it in the morning after all the glue has time to dry. All right, so the glue has had time to dry overnight, and I'm going to go ahead and take off all of the tape. I really like how the caulking has uh, dried up in here and really made this feel a lot smoother. So I think I'm going to clean up the glue that has oozed out from just putting it together. And I think I am going to go ahead and caulk my outside seams just to make it look a little more high-end. Uh, I was noticing on Ikea that they have a terrarium that is about this size. It's white. I think there's a, some kind of a composite kind of metal. It's probably a little more heavy duty than this one. I haven't seen it in person, but um, I think it was going for $29.99. So far I have $6 into this project and probably, I don't know, 45 minutes worth of my time, half hour maybe. So this is 
definitely looking like a more economical choice. And with letting it cure overnight with just E6000 mostly, not a whole lot of hot glue, um, it feels pretty sturdy actually. And I have decided I'd like to try to put the glass back in it, but I want to make sure that um, it's going to be good and sturdy. And that's why I'm thinking that the caulking will be a good choice. So I'm just going to take my razor blade and just kind of clean up the little spots where the glue got out of control. Be very careful. Don't cut yourself and don't cut through your frame. And don't cut out so much glue that you break the seal. I have done that before as well. Nothing will make you matter <laughs> than spending all the time working on it and then messing it up, trying to clean it up and make it look better. Remember, these are just Dollar Tree frames. So they're not the sturdiest things in the world, but I think for the purpose this is being used for, I think it's okay. I'm okay if there's some scratches on my frames because I'm going to paint and distress this anyway. That's another thing. The Ikea one was pure pristine white not distressed I like things distressed I think y'all know that by now okay then I have some dribbles of glue in here that I want to get rid of from where it was drippy when I put the top on all right so I'm just going to take my caulk I'm just curious. Let me see. Let me read the directions. Oh, it can be painted within 20 minutes of application or painted with a spray paint sprayer immediately. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and use this pretty liberally because it's going to dry pretty fast. I didn't realize it was that fast drying. So I'm just going to put a bead of it down the seam, whoops, and this is going to help hide my glue mess too, and then I'm going to take my finger and just spread it out. All right, so I took it outside and I gave it a coat, a couple of coats actually, of um, spray paint. And now I'm going to take just some black chalk paint, Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. And I've got a very dry brush. And I'm gonna start with black on a very dry brush and just see how I like it and I might add some more colors in. If I don't like it distressed I can always take it back outside, put another coat of white on it and call it good. Alright, I think I'm going to stop right there. I kind of like that. I have decided that I'm going to um, put the glass back in. I'm going to start with the two small pieces on the top and I'm going to be using E6000 and hot glue combo. So I'm going ahead and getting my E6000 pumped in here and I'm going all the way around the inside edge where the glass sits and I'm leaving a spot in the middle for some hot glue. 
I'm going to do one side at a time. Sorry, my head's getting in the way here. Once I know that the hot glue is holding, then I can flip it over and do the other side. All right, now I'm going to put the hot glue in here in the middle where I left it open. And then in goes my first piece of glass. I'm not going to worry about fingerprints at this point. I'll take care of fingerprints later. Okay. I'm going to put caulking on that. So I'm going to let this sit for a minute. I just want to make sure that it's holding. I'm going to flip it over. So that I can glue the glass on the other side. I'm just leaving about a one or two inch gap of space for the hot glue to go because you don't want your E6000 and your hot glue to mix because if they do they don't get along. They can work together side by side but you don't want them to mix. gets nice and tight and cured I'm going to come back and put caulking on the back side just to help cover up the seams and make it look nicer all right so now I'm going to let the E6000 dry for a little bit while I go eat some lunch and then I'm going to come back and do the big pieces they kind of they kind of worry me a little bit, but we'll give it a try. So the E6000 in hot glue seems to be holding really well. So I'm going to take some of the same caulk that I used to fill the holes. And I'm just going to run a bead. Smooth it in with my finger. And clean it off the glass. And this is just going to seal the edge of the glass just so there's no sharp edges that are exposed. can't see this too well. I'm just trying to squeeze a nice even bead so that I don't have to flatten it with my finger. It's going in pretty well. Around the edge and that's just going to help sealing the glass a little bit. It's not an adhesive caulk, so all of the holding power is coming from the E6000 and the hot glue that I put in earlier. And so it's a little precarious to get in here between all the frames, but I really think that putting the glass in here is going to make this more sturdy, more solid, and then just putting this caulking on it is just going to make it safer so that you don't have an edge of glass exposed. Trying to give you a, oops, sorry, <laughs> trying to give you a close up of what I'm doing here. And I'm finding if I push the tip of the caulking tube hard enough against the frame that it just pumps right in there and I don't need to smooth it out with my finger. It's just going to kind of help clean it up and make it a little bit nicer looking so that it uh, doesn't fall apart on me. Alright, now that my glue gun is hot, 
I'm going to turn this up on its side and grab, I'm going to do the two smaller pieces first. Okay. When I'm zoomed in like this, uh, it tends to go out of focus a little bit. So if that happens, I'm sorry, I may not notice it while I'm trying to get this in. So the first thing I need to do is put down E6000 and I'm leaving an inch or two in the middle for hot glue and I'm putting a good bead of it in there. Now it's very top heavy right now because of the glass being in the top so I gotta be careful of that and I'm trying to put the E6000 up in the corner, whoa, up in the corner as best I can. Not so much on the edge. Okay. I'm going to cap my E6000. And then hot glue goes in. The hot glue will hold it in place right now, but not for a permanent bond and not for a long time. So, and in goes the glass. Oh, it's not going in. Okay, there it goes. All right. I didn't want to. If you wait too long with hot glue, it goes cold and it doesn't work. I'm going to take my caulking and seal the back edge. I'm going to Flip this over the other way. So that I can put glue in here and glue the next one in. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the other pieces in exactly like that and I'll be back. My terrarium piece is done. I'm going to let it dry for a couple of hours before I go any farther with it because I'm hearing the glass moving a little bit. And I want to make sure that it's attached and I'm a little nervous about this bottom one because it's, it's it looks like it's pulling away from the glass to me and so what I'm going to do to remedy that is to grab a couple of clothes pins I'm going to turn it on its side and I'm going to clip the glass to the frame Trying very carefully not to, uh, well, maybe that won't work. No, nope, that won't fit on there. I just, the glass isn't fitting, <laughs> isn't staying put. Plan B is a binder clip. I'm going to use a Jenga block. Okay, there we go. That's holding the glass in. So I guess I best do the same with the other side. I just want to make sure that The glass is making con or that the glue is making contact with the front of the frame. So I need to let that dry for a little bit before I go on to anything else. In the meantime, I have cut out my Hey There Pumpkin. Okay, and that is going to go up inside once the caulking and everything is dry. And I'm going to attach it with 
uh, Velcro so that I can change it out for the seasons. So I'm going to go away, put this somewhere to safely to dry for a few minutes, and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the bottom tray. All right. So I found I was going to use a uh, cookie sheet from the Dollar Tree to go underneath my um, terrarium, but when I went to the thrift store today, I found this really cool old frame, and it's got like this tray effect right here, and I thought, oh, I hope that will fit in. I measured, it's a little bit wider this way than it needs to be, so I'm just going to scoot it to the front, and then it fits right around the groove in here. I just got lucky. Okay, so it's going to fit right on top of that, but I don't really want to leave the glass just like that, and I don't want that print in there. So what I'm going to do is fold up the little staples that are here. I might end up taking them out. I'm just going to fold them up for right this minute, and we'll see. Um, this looks like a custom frame to me just by the stickers on the back it's not like taped down like a custom frame would be so i don't know for sure but it's definitely a nicer quality frame and it was only four dollars you can find some really nice good deals at your thrift stores okay so i'm definitely going to take out this print And I was thinking that it would be nice to put scrapbook paper in there and just leave the glass. Um, so I think that might be what I'm going to do. And this is some really nice solid cardboard. So I think we're going to be good on that. If you didn't want to leave the glass in it, it's not going to have like a bunch of weight on it. It's going to have some decoration, but I don't think it's going to be extremely heavy and in need of really heavy duty um, weight stuff. So if you didn't want to put the, leave the glass on there, you could totally take paint sticks and put the paint sticks across there. You could put in a piece of a board. You could use foam core, um, anything. If, if Even if you could find a frame for a dollar maybe that didn't have... Um, glass in it you could do that as well so I'm just gonna pull out this hanger so that my tray will sit flat and then I need to find some scrapbook paper and I'll bet you all know what kind I'm gonna go look for all right I bet you all thought I was looking for a buffalo check and well I was <laughs> But the fact of the matter is, I'm out of the black and white buffalo check. So I went with burlap, a nice thick paperback burlap. Um, now I have a choice. I can put the burlap on top and the glass in between the burlap and the um, cardboard, but I don't know. Part of me wants to leave the glass on top so that I can clean it easier. But the other part of me likes the texture of the burlap. <laughs> so I'm trying to decide. I'll get this in here nice and smooth and then we'll look at it. Okay. Let's see what it looks like under the glass. Oh, I like that. I think that's going to look really nice. Okay, we're going with that. And then I'm going to put my cardboard back in, which is probably going to be a little bit tight. And I want to make sure I push these staples back down really well. And the beauty about doing a tray like this is it's changeable. If you get to where you're tired of burlap and you want red glitter for Christmas, you can easily pop a piece of red glitter scrapbook paper into there and call it good. Okay, 
so there's my tray that my little terrarium guy will sit on. It's a very dirty tray at the moment. It was out in the outside area at my thrift store, just kind of getting ready to go away, I think. But I just love the texture of it. It's very sloped right here. And I think it's going to look really pretty. Okay, that's as far as I can go until my terrarium is dry. It looks like it's getting good and solid in there now. I'm not hearing the glass moving and I'm not feeling it moving. So that's a good thing. All right. All right, things have dried. I've cleaned off most of the glue and I am so happy with how this turned out. It's it's awesome. So now I have my Hello Layer Pumpkin mat. I'm going to lay this down on its back. And I want to put the Hello Pumpkin inside of here. So I need to trim it just a little bit more. And to do that, I'm going to follow the line that's on the texture of the mat. That will help me get it straight and also just make it even. Okay. So I've got this. And I am going to attach this with Velcro. And I'm going to take out just a little notch up at the top, just like two little rows of the two little lines of the mat. And the reason I'm doing that is because where the corners meet up here, it's hitting and it just needs to just needs to slide in there a little nicer. And having that on there is helping. So I could have actually cut my my pumpkin just a tiny bit wider. So it could have come down inside and that would have been great too, but I didn't and we're going to work with what we have. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and use um, the smaller Velcro circles from the Dollar Tree. These ones come from the craft section. They're just little round circles. Uh, on previous, the previous one I used these big heavy duty black squares but the edge of the frame is just too small for that so what I like to do is you have the crunchy side the grabs and the soft side and I just like to fold them and put them together and then I take my scissors and I cut them apart and I'm thinking that four should be enough And I'm going to peel them off. And I like to put the crunchy side down to my solid base. So to the frame is going to go the crunchy side. Okay. And I'm just sticking that down inside of there. I don't know why I always, I guess it's because there's a lot of things that are kind of soft that you can stick to Velcro that um, then you wouldn't have to replace the whole piece. So it just seems like the, the grabbing side should be the part that stays on a piece permanently. That's just my thinking. So I'm just putting these up into the corners, leaving both pieces stuck together for right now. And these um, Velcros are pretty sticky. Okay, so I'm going to lay this in here. And I'm going to just gently push down on it. Okay, so now when I stand this up, you see that inside of there. Now we need to decorate inside. Okay, be right back. Let me go get a tray full of supplies. 
Okay, so I've just been kind of experimenting with some things to go on my tray. I got this little red truck scrubby holder thing at the Cracker Barrel Country Store for $7.99. Liked it so much I went back this weekend, this last weekend and bought another one. And I just stuck some clearance succulents that I got at Hobby Lobby in there. And these two pumpkins are from the Target Dollar Spot. And they look cute in here. And this is one of the Dollar Tree houses with some sunflowers and then I made these beads a couple videos ago and then I just added a couple of little red apples and I'm hoping I'm kind of looking at it hope hoping that it will fit over the top ah, and be centered in there nicely okay I gotta fix that <laughs> I need to glue those in but I didn't really want to glue them permanently because I want to be able to change this out. So maybe I need to glue them to something and stick them inside of there. All right. I don't know. What you think? I think it looks kind of cute as a little fall display. I wish I could put the little house over a little farther so you can see the whole saying on the back on this mat. I think that the mat is very cute. And I also thought about this. I put it on with Velcro because as the seasons change and you don't maybe want fall in there, you can also use the placemats from the Dollar Tree or the Dollar General to uh, be your backing on there. And then you can make your display in front of that. I do want to show you. The back side of this. Okay, the frame is a little larger than my um, terrarium, but I can go ahead and decorate that up too so that if it's sitting on the table and that's going to show that it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I can just tuck some little leaves in there to cover it up and, uh, and it just looks like it was meant to be that way. Okay, like it's not an afterthought. It was actually there and meant to be that way. I could put a window cling on this too if I needed to decorate that side. Um, you can get some beautiful window clings out there right about now. Okay? All right. Sorry, my uh, terrarium's a little larger than my photo taking spot. Anyway, there's that project. I hope you like it. It's probably not what you were expecting me to do with the pumpkin doormat, make a terrarium out of it, but um, it inspired this terrarium and so I hope that you like it I hope that you will go and make this for yourself as far as the terrarium goes there's six dollars worth of Dollar Tree frames and one dollar worth of the mat and then um, I think I paid four dollars for that frame so seven eleven dollars total and I have a piece that looks a lot like the one from Ikea and Ikea was selling it, I think, for $29.99. It's about the same size, but Ikea's doesn't have glass in it. And I really like the sparkle and the reflection that I'm getting off the glass. So it also should help keep the dust down just a little bit. All right, so let me know what you're thinking about this project in the comment section below. Is this something you might try to make for yourself? You could also make it with smaller, um, smaller picture frames, your floor mat, or doormat wouldn't work as your background but possibly a placemat would so bear that and keep that in mind uh, you could also put window clings on the back to be your background but the possibilities are endless and since this is attached with velcro I can easily easily change it out for this seasons all right let me know what you're thinking about it I hope that this will inspire you to do something similar I have been wanting to make one of these terrariums for Oh man, over a year and I just never committed to doing it. And now that it's done and I'm looking at it, I'm so glad I did. And I've got a brand new entryway table that I picked up at the thrift store today and this is going to go on that. All right. Let me know what you're thinking. If you like the project, please give it a thumbs up. That helps my channel to grow and it helps me to know what you guys are liking to see on my channel. Alright, this has been Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time.